On February 15, 1872, the Spanish colonial authorities sentenced three martyr fathers, Jose Burgos, Mariano Gomez, and Jacinto Zamora to death by Garote at Bagumbayan, Philippines, and charged with tison, sedition, and subversion. Two days after verdict, they were executed. The charges against fathers Gomez, Burgos, and Zamora was their alleged complicity in the uprising of workers at the Cavite Naval Yard. It was believed by Governor Rafael Izquierdo that the Filipinas will create its own government and allegedly the three priests were nominated as the leader of the planned government in order to break free of the Spanish government. The death of Gumburza awakened strong spirits of anger and resentment among the Filipinos. They grilled Spanish authorities and demand reforms due to the prejudicial governance of the Spanish authorities. The martyrdom of the three priests ironically assisted in the creation of the propaganda movement which aimed to seek reform and inform the Spanish people on the abuse of its colonial authorities in the Philippine Islands. There were two versions of the Cavite Mutiny the Filipino version and the Spanish version. In Rafael Esquerdo's account, the mutiny was hatched by a group of native Filipino priests, several mestizos of lawyers who were fighting against the crimes and abuses experienced by Filipinos under the Spanish regime. And according to his official report to the King of Spain, he magnified the event and made use of it to implicate the native clergy, which was then active in the call for secularization of Paris. Rafael Escudero was the Governor General of the Philippines from 1871 to 1873. He was famous for his use of iron fist type of government, conducting the liberal government of his predecessors. He imposed a reform which suggested that the soldiers of the engineering and artillery corps should pay taxes from which they were previously exempt and they were also required to perform manual labor. As a writer, Montero contributed to the Real Academia de la Historia and wrote three volumes of his books. Historia General Filipinas desde el Descubrimiento de Dichas Islas hasta Nuestros Días, which included the first-hand account on the Cavite Mutiny, published on Volume 3, by which were successively published from 1887, 1894, and 1895. Print source, Madrid, M. Telo, 1887 to 95, 11,653 km away from Cavite. He also reported that the three Filipino priests named Mario Gomez, Jose Borgos, and Jacinto Zamora is planning to liquidate the Spanish rulers and take over their positions. Jose Montero y Vidal, a prolific Spanish historian, documented the event and highlighted it as an attempt of the Indians to overthrow the Spanish government in the Philippines. Both Montero and Izquierdo scored out that the abolition of privileges enjoyed by the workers of the Cavite arsenal, such as non-payment of contributes and exemption from forced labor, were the main reasons of the revolution as how they called it. First, the account of Trinidad Pardo de Tavera, a Filipino physician, historian, and politician of Spanish and Portuguese descent. Trinidad, also known by his name T.H. Pardo de Tavera, was known for his writings about different aspects of Philippine culture. Dr. Trinidad Hermenegildo Pardo de Tavera, a Filipino scholar and researcher, wrote the Filipino version of the bloody incident in Cavite. Edmond Lachute, a Frenchman residing in Manila at the time of the revolt, gives a dispassionate account of it and its cause in an article published in French Literary Magazine. Review this Dios Mondes in 1877. His account complemented Travera's account by confirming that the event happened due to Governor General Rafael Izquierdo's E. Gutierrez exacting 
of personal taxes from the soldiers and workers. General Esquerdo introduced rigid and strict policies that made the Filipinos move and turn away from the Spanish government out of disgust. There was dissatisfaction among the workers of Arsenal as well as the members of the Native Army after their privileges were drawn back by General Esquerdo. The central government failed to conduct an investigation on what truly transpired but relied on reports of Esquerdo and the friars and the opinion of the public. The Filipino clergy members actively participated in the secularization movement in order to allow Filipino priests to take hold of the parishes in the country, making them pray to the rage of the friars. Besides from Gumburza execution on January 28, 1872, the military court sentenced 41 mutineers to death. However, on the next day, Governor Rafael Escuerdo pardoned 28 mutineers and the rest were confirmed to sentence. On February 6, 1872, 11 mutineers were sentenced to death but Governor Escuerdo committed their death sentence to life imprisonment. Together with the execution of Garote to the three martyrs was Enrique Paraiso, Maximo Inocencio, and Crisanto de los Reyes were imposed to 10 years of imprisonment. Gomez, parish priest in Bacaor Cavite, was founder of the newspaper La Verdad, The Truth, in which he described the deplorable condition of the country and printed the liberal article of Burgos. The priest earned the heir of Spanish and were called filibusteros. Burgos was linked to many activities perceived as hostile towards the Spanish since he was also one of the organizers of the Committee of Reformers which campaigned for more liberal laws. The committee was composed of two sections, the laymen and the clergy. The lay group was headed by Joaquin Pardo de Tavera while the cleric section which include Gomez and Zamora was headed by Burgos.